So I've used the Z Fold 4 for the last half a year, preparing for the Z Fold 5, which I've now used for the past few weeks. Do we still think that the Z Fold 5 is disappointing or did we change our minds? Goedendag, we're DHRME, doing hands-on radio telephone mobile exceptions. The biggest issue with the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 is how great a device the Z Fold 4 was. The 4 is a refined foldable rather than a first-gen device. What Samsung especially does well is how the outer and inner screens work with each other. Open up an app on the little screen, you want to expand your canvas, go ahead and just open it up. And if you use two apps at once, you can make an app pair. Most of my use cases involve using a messaging app like WhatsApp with some sort of productivity or content consumption app. Scripting a YouTube video while listening to music? Check. Checking with your fellow YouTuber if the packages have arrived while randomly watching YouTube? Check. Also, yes, I know, I know, all the Samsung apps still check. I know Kevin hates this because he thinks Pixel is a cleaner experience, but it absolutely does not bother me. When I switched over to the Fold 5 using Smart Switch, all my apps and settings were good to go, so I barely noticed this. Samsung hasn't been completely asleep at the wheel though. First off, there's an out there Samsung feature called two-handed drag and drop. Warning, only use this when your phone is on the table. Say you want to share an image of Rajnikanth to your messaging app, drag and hold the image and use your other hand, open the messaging app and drop it in there. It's not something we've used often, but it's nice to know it's there. Some of the more useful features, however, are swiping up with two fingers. This lets you select an app that will run in the bottom half. If you aren't using a custom launcher, the taskbar also shows more apps and the open tablet feels more Windows-ish. Shame that you have to use the One UI launcher to enable this though. So now Niagara's on our quick launch menu. In our impressions video, we were disappointed about how Samsung has kept the form factor the same. But you know what, after using it for a while, sure, the front screen is still narrow, but we're okay with the if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. The Z Fold 4 screen was fine and the Fold 5 is fine as well. Yes, it's slightly elongated, but you know what, this is a win for pocketability and one-handed use. You can't use the stylus on the front screen yet again, and that is a disappointment for many, but we are not stylus folks, having hardly used it on the S23 Ultra too. What hasn't changed is the IPX8 rating. Man, we would have loved some dust resistance on this model. Probably the biggest disappointment is in terms of battery. Charging speeds are still disappointing. 25 watts, really? It's still a one day plus 10 to 20% kind of battery life for us. That hasn't changed. The battery numbers in real life use were slightly better on the Z Fold 5, but we'll be real with you, there's practically no difference here. Not enough to waste another sentence on anyway. The form factor changes are huge when you first hear them, but they actually recede into the background once you start using phones in real life. The new colors, lower weight and thinner size, for example, are barely noticeable once you slap a case on these phones. And we're very much case people. The hinge that closes flat is, however, a big deal for one reason. There is so much less dust and lint on the inside of the screen now. What has also changed, and since we do a lot of audio tech reviews, we notice these things are the speakers. And not for the better. Well, let's qualify that. To begin with, the Fold 5 is a bit louder and that's a real world benefit, but not by much. The sound of the speakers is also much brighter. So you hear more treble, but on speakers of this size, it doesn't really matter. Scratch that, it's actually worse since it ends up feeling tinny and a bit screechy. While listening to music and for male and female vocals, the Z Fold 4 speakers were what we slightly preferred. But if you're just doing calls, that extra volume might be handy in noisy places. Here, listen for yourselves. Yeah, I'm headed to the bus, then I'm running like ya. Yeah. I ain't looking at the clock, still running like bra. What is a game changer for you S Pen users out there is the new S Pen case. It's considerably thinner, which makes the case and stylus much more pocketable. And here, those funky colors are way more interesting than the boring phone colors, even with that icy blue. The panel is also supposed to be slightly brighter in daylight. Peak brightness is up from 1500 to 1750 nits. And you know, with summers getting warmer and brighter, we welcome this change. We had no problems using it in bright sunlight with sunglasses on. And on the topic of glass, the front and back panels have gotten an upgrade as well. Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which is again something we are not testing, but it's nice to know that the protection is there if you need it. The newer Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy is slightly snappier and apps launch a bit quicker. And if you consistently use two apps at once, it feels a bit quicker as well. Maybe it's the placebo effect at play. Either way, you also feel it in games like Genshin Impact when you turn around and move quickly. 
if you're not downloading updates in a million ways, which is what we seem to be doing all the time, but what the processor does enable is something we just did not expect, a different camera experience. The cameras have been an absolute surprise. When Samsung told us that the sensors were the same, we were super disappointed. But side by side with the Z Fold 4, there's a clear difference. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 certainly adds a little something to the images. Starting with the selfie cam, this was an area of immense disappointment for me on the Z Fold 4. The Fold 4 selfies are always washed out, over smoothened and just, let's face it, bad. For someone who's a bit obsessed with taking selfies, hey, you own who you are, right? I found that selfies were just not worth it with the Fold 4. The Fold 5 though consistently delivers on this front, whether it's good light, multiple faces, challenging backlit scenes, or poor light, or even the flash from the screen, the Fold 5 consistently outperforms the Fold 4. Strange, because Samsung didn't really tout this as a big difference to us. Did Samsung actually undersell the Fold 5? From the full facial to the wide outdoors, the first telephoto lens outputs aren't looking promising with this electric line and these yellow flowers looking pretty garbage at 20x zoom. The S23 Ultra, these cameras are not. Now looking at this picture of the path, you can start telling that these come from different cameras. The Fold 4 is consistently a bit warmer. The greens have a tinge of yellow to them, but overall this isn't a huge difference. Similar story here for this photo of a curry leaf plant. In this portrait of these two flowers, there's something just a little bit better about the Fold 5 output. And there's really nothing in this overcast picture of the parking lot. Nothing interesting anyway. And the wide angle lenses are fairly similar as well. All right, we've been outside. Let's get something to eat, shall we? Starting with this picture of the Vada Pao, the difference isn't as much the detail as it is the color science. Again, the Fold 5 tends to be warmer. Now, this picture of the beer is the biggest difference in this set. Trust me, I took multiple shots to make sure that the composition didn't affect it. But time and time again, the Fold 5 turned up a brighter shot. There's also ever so little more detail in the Fold 5's photo, which is pretty cool. The Detail is marginally more in this picture of the spiraled spiced onion, much similar to the tempura prawn. We also went for a walk around dust to give you an idea of how these do with lower light. And you know what? For pictures, it's pretty much the same. The sunset, for example, looks very similar, but when you switch that same scene to video, the Fold 5 adds a bit more of a blue sky tint in the video. In the backlit selfie, the face is much better exposed on the Fold 5 than the Fold 4. But surprisingly, on the photo, the results are identical, even when you zoom in to see Rowan's pores. Zooming into this party boat, we see that none of these has the chops of the Ultra. And this is the front camera on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. And this is the selfie video on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 with some backlight behind my head. At nighttime using flash, the pictures appear identical in these photos of the creeper leaves thing. But zooming in, the Fold 5 has more noise, especially towards the bottom. The picture of the heart, the color wheels on the laptop are all fairly similar to each other too. But zooming in, especially to the text on the laptop, shows that the Fold 5 is clearly pulling more detail. I took this picture of the thermometers in fairly low light around dusk, and the Fold 5 seems to be extracting more detail from the wooden grain, whereas the Fold 4 kind of smooshes it into a smooth surface. Surface. When activating night mode on this picture of the keys, you see much more detail when zooming into the Fold 5 picture. Same for this night mode shot of the plant, but it's pretty much unusable from both cameras. There's also an under display camera once you open the Fold up, and you should not use that under any circumstances. If you're on a Zoom call, just lie and say that your camera isn't working. Galaxy Z Fold 4, Galaxy Z Fold 5. Which one is worse? And what about video? How do these perform? This is the Galaxy Z Fold 4. This is the Galaxy Z Fold 5. And there you go. This is at 1x in pretty good light. There's a wide angle. And this is the 3x zoom in pretty good light. Low light video test on the Z Fold 5 and the Z Fold 4 Z. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Look, a lot of other things like the battery life, physical design have remained the same. But Kevin, do you remember you'd asked me if I daily drive the Z Fold 4? And I said, I'd rather use the S23 Ultra and I would never daily drive the Z Fold 4. Well, with the Z Fold 5, I've changed my mind. And why is that? Well, for one simple reason, the camera. I finally feel that the camera's at a level where I can accept using this daily and capturing images of my kid who's growing up all too quickly. Also for us as content creators, the higher starting storage doesn't hurt. Now, let's address some questions. Would you want to upgrade from the Z Fold 4? Well, the difference isn't huge in many ways. 
Rowan's in the minority, but the majority of Fold 4 users wouldn't want to upgrade. This is an incremental update, but you kind of knew that already. What about the Z Fold 5 versus the competition though? The Pixel Fold, the Oppo, or the crazy thin Honor Magic V2? Well, we've used the Oppo Find N2 Flip and somehow we didn't love the software, even though their crease was less pronounced than the Z Flip. Something about the software just doesn't appeal to us and that all American Pixel Fold, well, the cameras are super tempting, as is the different form factor. Should we just order one? Well, that's just it. The availability isn't great. We're gonna find one though. Stay subscribed. In many ways, the Z Fold series is still the original folding phone and in many ways, it's still the superior phone. I mean, there are so many little tweaks that make this device a joy to use and we haven't even covered power user features like Dex, the Samsung ecosystem, for example, including smartwatches and smart things here. A mature product does come with its benefits. The iPhone has shown us over the course of a decade that boring ain't bad, but only time will tell if the playing it safe approach will help Samsung. Samsung innovated this product category, but there's competition in the air, and that's good for all of us. You've been fiving and fouring, and we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste.